You know, it really wasn't that long ago, about a month, month and a half ago, we saw the results from the last consumer sentiment survey about how it ticked up to the highest level, the fastest rate that it did since the 1990s. So that must mean everything's back on track. But I guess the drugs are starting to wear off. People aren't really high anymore because reality is starting to set in and we're starting to see that the consumer sentiment is now starting to drop once again over more growing fears over a recession, guys. And this is not me saying this. This is the official data that gets collected regarding consumer sentiment. So clearly more and more people are concerned that we are gonna have this recession and I think more people are starting to realize that it's kind of inevitable at this point. It's just a question of when, not if. The funny thing is, is the forecast for the consumer sentiment is that it was gonna remain steady from January through February, but in fact fell from 110.9 down to 106.7. Sounds like a radio station. 106.7, the recession. And here's the thing. With their typical data in the past, they say that anything, any reading that comes in below 80 for measuring short-term expectations for income, business, and the job market signals that we're probably gonna be hitting a recession very soon. That index fell from 81.5 down to 79.8, so just below that 80 that typically signals a recession. Consumers' current view of the economy also fell from 154.9 down to 147.2 as people's confidence in this current economy continue to be eroded. And they're saying, well, this is a surprise considering how resilient this economy has been. So people are kind of like puzzled by this. Why would anybody be feeling worse about things when everything's looking on the up and up? It's because the people that say that things are on the up and up are not living in reality. They're living in fantasy land and are the top 1%. By the way, I'm walking around in the north side of Bay Harbor Islands today. I haven't been here in a really long time. I think probably close to a year at this point. Let's see if anything's different up here. And I think part of the, the mishap here, part of the misunderstanding of what's going on is you continually see stories about how inflation is coming down and that you know the Fed's gonna cut rates this year and that's all supposed to signal you know back to happiness for everybody and then you also see things like you know unemployment is still low and the economy grew at 3.3 percent in the fourth quarter which was just recently down revised by the way because i think it was over four percent before so once again another downward revision but all these numbers are basically meaningless because all that really matters is for the average person is after i pay all my bills how much money's left okay and i think that's the real issue that no one wants to talk about especially the fed and our government and i also suspect that part of the reason that this consumer sentiment started to drop in february is because i i told you guys how you know the last time i went grocery shopping i noticed you know a big difference in prices on almost everything starting at the beginning of the year and i noticed the same thing the year before so it seems like the beginning of the year is when you especially get hit with that food inflation and that is probably the most noticeable form of inflation for everybody because we all need to buy food we all need to eat and so if you go to the grocery store frequently you're going to notice this even more but they don't have a measure for the economy and for inflation about how much money's left over in people's accounts after uh they pay all their bills guys they don't measure that they, go, they just measure the savings rate, supposedly people's disposable income, but I don't know how accurate that is either because if people had savings right now, people wouldn't be going into record amounts of debt just to pay all their bills. And the other problem is inflation is actually moving in the wrong direction. You know, the most recent inflation readings showed that inflation is actually going back up. It's not going down and it's not hitting the target goals that the Fed has set out of 2%. The PCE jumped by 0.4% in January. It was predicted to be 0.3%. The total index was projected to be 2.4% ended at 2.8%. 
So it's not going in the direction that they want it to go in. They also saw us drop in consumer spending recently, a drop of 0.7%. They're saying that during the month of January, goods spending fell by 1.1% and services spending increased by 0.4%. But they also say how the household finances got a big boost to start the year. It says personal income, which includes employer contributions to health and pension plans, surged by 1%. Oh my goodness, man. Wow. People are really getting rich off of that, huh? 1% increase, which is equal to the gain that we saw in January of 2023. So let me get this straight. The PCE, okay, went up by 2.8% and people's incomes in January surged. So they used the word surged by 1%. So by my math, People are still falling behind and the wages are not keeping up with inflation as the, at the beginning of this year. So surprise, surprise, you know, consumer sentiment starting to go back down. The drugs are starting to wear off. And this is where it gets really bleak because look at this guys, after taking out taxes, disposable income grew by only 0.3%, but yet it's such a shocker that the consumer sentiment is going down in this environment. Now, overall, I think this is a good thing because it means that more people are waking up to reality and noticing that, hey, all these things that I'm seeing on TV and the news and social media talking about how all these numbers are fantastic, you know, it's not really reflecting my reality. And the more people that start to catch on to that, then the faster I think we will actually sink into re a recession because half of the recession is psychological, right? If people think that we're in a recession, it's gonna cause a recession. And that's exactly what the, all these media posts that are anti-recession are aimed at. They're aimed at trying to convince people that we're not gonna see one in order to keep people spending like we're not gonna be in a recession. But there's a lot of other indicators out there right now that the economy is on shaky ground. One of my subscribers, Alex, sent me this story about how 30% of commercial real estate now is basically worthless. And what's being predicted is they're just gonna start tearing down a lot of these old office buildings that aren't being occupied and aren't worth anything anymore because the land that they sit on are now more valuable than this empty office building that has no tenants. Now the general consensus is that office buildings and commercial real estate that is still in a good location and a safe environment is also key are going to recover, which is exactly why you're seeing places like San Francisco struggle right now because even though the location might be good, the environment is no longer safe and people don't want to hang out there. Nobody wants to go outside their office. Even in Oakland, California now, they're telling people, don't leave your office for the lunch break. It's too dangerous. That's just right across the bridge from San Francisco. The crime is just out of control, guys. And office spaces and commercial real estate that's in places like this is basically doomed right now. Check this out. Whole brand new building up, almost ready to go, it looks like. Not that long ago, this was an empty lot. I walked over there, shot some B-roll footage for you guys. I'll show you what it used to look like. Crazy how fast things change, huh? I think some people pointed this out before too, that that's the building that guy Dexter used to live in from the show, Dexter. Right next door to this brand new monstrosity. Now here's why this is bad for the economy also, because what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a basically an urban doom loop. And what that is, is you have falling property values, which leads to a shrinking property tax base for the city, which cuts off funding for essential public services that drag property values down even further. So it's a vicious cycle that we're entering right now. And it's just gonna to continue to get worse in places like San Francisco and Oakland and wherever else the crime is out of control right now. And people don't wanna be in the office. Now there is some talk that they're gonna be converting some unused office space into residential real estate. We haven't really seen a big movement with that yet, so there's not much to report on with it as of right now. But in the future, this might be something to talk about. But the biggest problem with converting these office buildings is that it's extremely expensive. It might not actually be worth it. It might actually be, make more sense to just tear down the office building, rezone the space for residential, 
and build a residential tower instead. I mean, that's how expensive it can be to retrofit one of these buildings to up to code. But this is another thing that the federal government is sticking their hands in. Uh, the Biden administration set aside $35 billion basically to give below market rate loans to help developers with these type of office to residential conversions because of how expensive they are. Who knows if that's actually going to go towards anything, guys. Anytime the government throws money, especially towards real estate projects, it seems like you know all the bids and all the cost of construction seems to magically go so high that they can only build a few projects until all the money's gone. Wow, I'll tell you what. It used to be very peaceful to walk up here through this neighborhood. Not anymore, guys. Nothing but dump trucks and garbage trucks and street sweeper trucks and cement trucks. Just nothing but noise pollution and actual pollution. It's pretty awful, actually. It's a shame because this used to be one of my favorite areas to come to when I was selling real estate. You know, it was always very peaceful over here. Looks like those days are gone. But we just keep seeing more and more signs and more stories that the economy is just in general decline right now. There's a new report out as of January that's showing that manufactured goods fell by the most in nearly four years, which is a report from the Commerce Department. And this includes retail sales, housing starts, manufacturing production, and suggesting the economy lost momentum at the start of the year. Surprise, surprise. And it's funny because some of the weak readings that they have here are being blamed on freezing temperatures last month, as well as difficulties adjusting the data for seasonal fluctuations at the start of the year. So more excuses. But nonetheless, economists are not forecasting a recession, okay? Because the labor market is still tight. They're still saying the, the Fed is likely to start cutting rates in June. So I don't know how that's proof that we're not in a recession because they usually start cutting at the beginning of the recession. But anyways, that's what the economists are saying. But here's an interesting excerpt from this story here. It says, while economists have taken down their recession warnings, business leaders with boots on the ground are less certain of the economy's future. Well, this kind of rhymes with what I was saying earlier that who cares about the unemployment numbers? Who cares about the inflation numbers? Who cares about any of these stats that we're being fed? Because all that really matters at the end of the day is do you have money left from paying your bills. And you know, once all of your money's been spent, once all your bills have been paid for the month, do you have anything left? And is it anything sizable or substantial enough to make you feel like you're getting ahead in life? Because if the answer is no, then that's the real index of how the economy's going, guys. And that also means that people like that are paycheck to paycheck and one slip up, one emergency, you're going down. But the bottom line is with this, is that orders for many things haven't dropped this low since April of 2020 when the pandemic hit. So that's pretty alarming that things are going back down to pandemic era levels in terms of purchases, guys. That means people are just not buying the things like they used to. They're not spending the money, probably because they don't have the money. See, there's just trucks everywhere. The gardener, dump truck, they're all here. Here's something else to talk about. What happens to the stock market this year if there's no Fed rate cuts? Because they keep saying that there's gonna be some, you know, even all these economists are saying, oh yeah, by June, we're gonna get one. But what happens if they don't? <laughs> or what happens if they just only cut it a couple times and it's far below the expectations of the current market? Well, that could be a problem because over the past four months, S&P 500 skyrocketed 23%, and in the same time frame, the NASDAQ went up 27%. And this was all predicated on the fact that they were saying there's gonna be six rate cuts this year in 2023. All of this uh, rise in the stock market that we saw was basically built on false hope and euphoria. So what happens if you take the rate cuts out of the equation? Well, what you do is you remove a crucial stimulant at the time when the stock market might be particularly vulnerable to a mood swing. And obviously, in case you don't know, the main reason why the Fed might not cut rates this year is because all of this supposedly fantastic economic data keeps coming in hotter than they expect. And the whole reason for the rate cuts to begin with is that 
they were trying to slow things down, right? But it's not really working. So far, they haven't slowed anything down. If the economy is still bustling along, as we keep hearing month after month, then there's no incentive for the Fed to cut rates. And they're going to keep them higher for longer because that's what they need to do in order to slow the economy down, guys. I think a lot of people have forgotten that that has been the goal all along, is to slow the economy down. They want unemployment to increase. They want GDP to go down. They want sales on things to go down. That's the only way they're going to start lowering rates. Otherwise, what's the reason to do it? You know, everybody was expecting a recession last year, including me. Like Even most of the economists thought that at some point in 2023, we were going to hit a recession. But why didn't we? Because of all of these stimulus programs, because of everything that continues to be done to prop things up. And also you have to look at the fact that 70% of the US economy is based on consumer spending. So as long as people are still spending money, which a lot of it they don't have, which they are still doing, that gives this artificial illusion that the economy is still doing very good, which is these numbers that they're always reporting. Oh, GDP went up 3.3% in the fourth quarter. Maybe that's because people bought a bunch of presents for people that they couldn't afford for the holidays. Probably a big part of that. But the problem with the stock market is if these rate cuts do not materialize, you could potentially see things come down pretty substantially because they just were not prepared for it. Because all this growth in the market was driven by you know, multiples rather than corporate profits. It's basically just speculation, just like in real estate. And kind of yet another piece of data to just back up what I was saying about the stock market is you're starting to see the treasury yields go back up pretty substantially, actually, especially for the 10-year treasury. You know, it dipped all the way down to close to 3%. Now it's back up to 4.2 as of me shooting this video. And guess what that means for mortgage rates, guys? It means mortgage rates are going to stay around 7% until that treasury yield starts to come down. So those aren't going to be changing anytime soon either. Keeping housing just as expensive as ever right now. And the fact that the three month treasury consistently is outpacing the 10 year treasury with this inverted yield curve is still yet a big warning that we are very likely to see this recession materialize at some point in the future. But Probably we don't bet on it until next year since 2024 is an election year. But I will say if there's one thing that can be learned from all of this stuff right now is that there's always going to be surprises, especially when it comes to the economy and the housing market. You know, we try to go by uh, past data to tell us where things might be headed in the future. But just the way things have been going lately, you know, and we, we've been kind of dodging this recession far longer than anybody thought. And home prices keep going up in many places, even though affordability is at an all-time low, which is kind of like an anomaly. You don't really see this kind of thing happen. But I think one, one big history lesson we can take away from this, ultimately, is that you need to expect the unexpected, guys. So ultimately, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen next, because even though we have a lot of solid data that points to what might happen next, it still hasn't happened yet, which to me either means one of two things. Either the powers that be have so much power to manipulate this market to do whatever it wants that the old standards no longer apply, or we saw just enough stimulus over the past few years to push things out farther than anybody expected. And when things do come crashing down, it's going to be much worse than people expect it to be. So I don't know, you guys tell me what you think is going to happen. I read a lot of your comments and a lot of people have a lot of intelligent things to say. And at the end of the day, we're all just guessing, right? Because we don't really know. But it is an interesting thing to discuss. And uh, we're going to continue to discuss it as we continue getting more of these new stories. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this video on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.